I went to preach. We started from Enugu, and it was a, an Eastern Regional Apostolic Invasion. We started from Enugu. It was powerful. If I'm not mistaken, that the hall we used is the biggest possible hall that is available for rent in the whole of Enugu State. It was filled up. People were outside. My former colleagues in the office that were trying to, when they came to the venue and they saw the crowd, they didn't have the confidence to make it. I said, come inside, I'm inside. They left because of the crowd that was outside. So we, we finished from Enugu, we went to Oka. It was in Oka, I was in the hotel room praying and I saw blood. I don't know with what eyes, whether it was in this body or not, but I saw blood running on the walls of the hotel that they put me. And when I pressed about it and pressed about it, the great one said it was not the hotel. It was not because it was not particular to the hotel, but the entire territory that there's bloodshed in this territory. Gave some instructions as to what we need to do. It was a mighty meeting. In Enugu, cripples walked in Oka cripples walk. We moved from Oka to Oweri. It was in Oweri. After the first night, it was very tight. Second night, I went and prayed. And then it was the third night. When we came to the field, so I know some of you were watching, it rained throughout, I couldn't preach. It was when I went back that there was a spiritual fight. The principality came to my room. I defeated it, but it touched me here. <laughs> Please help me tell your neighbor, we wrestle. It touched me here. I left over there, I went to Abba. We had our meeting in Abba, PAF. From Abba, I went to Portacot, the edge of yeah, Portacot and finished the whole instant, instant conference. By the time I got back, I thought I was dead. And Shala now came and said, he has to say somewhere that ah, he told them that I'm coming. I put on one garment and followed him. We crossed the river. What's the river in Bees village, Pastor Bui. Crossed the river to go for the crusade. I was on the pulpit preaching and they didn't know I was blind. I almost fell, but they didn't know. At least the thing didn't stop me from talking. For like 20 minutes, I couldn't see. I was still talking, preaching, preaching. It was a powerful night that night. I crawled to my bed and I was sure that I would not wake up the next day. And I told Jesus, ah, is this how my exit from this world will look like? <laughs> and in the dream, the Lord now came to me and said, don't worry about yourself, just follow me. Came back, went to the hospital. When they tested me i was not i was so sick according to the test the principality touched me i was advised to rest i rested there were treatment all of that and i got back to my feet i told satan you would have taken me <laughs> it is it was in your interest for you to take me because you too you won't rest again a senior minister called me you know, I called him, I said, ah, does the devil attack you the way he attacks me? He said, my son, in 1983, <laughs> I went for a crusade in Oupa, and the whole place scattered. In fact, I'm talking about Evangelist Sunday, which he even gave an altar call and said, if you're a witch here, if you're a witch, signify which is which the power was too much that which is hard to accept we are here we are also we also came we came for the crusade okay and satan spoke to him satan said if you allow my people i will allow you if you keep attacking my people i will continue to attack you but if you allow my people <laughs> i will allow you so satan brought that thought to him before he came for the crusade ground and when the hand of god was moving so powerfully and the witches indicated that they were witches. Satan spoke again. I said, if you allow me, I will allow you. So because of that quiet agreement, he refused to deliver those witches. He said, you are delivered in Jesus' name. And you know that's not how deliverance takes place. <laughs> Do you know that he was driving out of that crusade ground on the way, just like one hour on the way back home, the witches, they attacked him. So he said, ah. So Satan doesn't keep to his agreements. So he made up his mind that he was going to. That's 1980. What? Three. 
How many years down the road? He made up his mind that he was going to do damage to the kingdom of darkness. Because Satan will never keep any negotiation agreement with you for, for your safety. If the issue of that attack was not strong, I will not tell you. You think? It was as if life was living. But I continue preaching. Continue preaching. And what, what, after that crusade, Jesus Christ. I learned a thing or two. First thing I learned was not to overstretch my body. Right? You need to be in very good balance in health, in spirit, to be able to combat spiritual warfare. Don't stand at any extreme. Satan will exploit it. Are you with me? So even now that you are fasting, ensure that you are hydrated. Take water. Eh? Don't say you are... Don't find yourself on any extreme whatsoever if you want to survive this war. So we are talking about spiritual attacks and I will just be very, very brief. John chapter 10, verse number 10. It says, The thief cometh not but to steal to kill and to destroy so these are three levels of attacks some attacks are attacks of theft where satan tries to take from you that which is legitimately yours hallelujah destiny theft is a specialty in spiritual attacks we have thefts we have exchanges what is meant for you can be spiritually exchanged and given to someone else through sorcery through manipulation so we have first kind of attacks are in form of thefts for the thief comet not even though he's identified as a thief his activity goes beyond stealing it's inclusive of stealing and it goes beyond stealing there are we've seen people i'm talking about in practical ministry practical experience we've seen people that um i don't know how the devil was able to say that they had a bright future and he put spanner in the works of their destiny transmitted the the essence of their destiny and that destiny was funding someone else's life the advancement that was supposed to come to this young man was going to the other person. I don't know how they achieved that, but it was the work of the thief. Oh my. I've seen people that were supposed to be wealthy in abject poverty. And people use their, the substance of their word spiritually to fund other interests. Those of you that are from the thief extraction of the state, there is a certain witchcraft spell which has gained rep reputation over the years. Uh, what's the name of that? Chief, Chief Don, please take the microphone and mention that name. Because somebody in, in Finland will not know that there's anything like that. Can you describe that witchcraft? Please. Yeah. Switch on your microphone. So Chief Don will try to help us describe. And this is the best, a very practical description of spiritual theft. Okay, go on. So this is like uh, a god of prosperity. Okay. Normally they take human bone or they carve a wooden image and then they will kill human blood or kill somebody and, and then pour the blood, blood on upon the it and then activate it. Now, when it is activated, let's say we are all family members. Me, you, Shala, Evangelist Philip, Pastor Ogbe. If it's activated and I'm the one to prosper, what will happen to the rest? They'll be poor. They'll be poor. That's spiritual theft. It's the essence if you're a tip man here, let me. Do you have any insight into what he's saying? All right. So, so that's spiritual theft. You see, the prosperity, the, the pseudo prosperity that the guy that is prospering through that agency is receiving um, is at the expense of the possibilities of the rest members of the family. So the rest members of the family will pay the price. Their essence, their substance, their light, their illumination is gathered. And used to empower one individual, and their own lot and portion will be abject poverty, penury. That was why I was telling us the other day when we we're talking about evidences of demonic activity around people's lives. When you find an unnatural kind of poverty, it's as a result of manipulation. It's a function of the activity of the thief. 
The thief cometh not. He doesn't have any other agenda. But when he shows up, what he does is that he steals. So there are categories of spiritual attacks that are within the description of theft. Are you with me? So what Pastor Donatus just described is one of the manifestations of spiritual theft. Why? Okay, there's a brother in the... Okay, bro, come. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes these things... Do. No, 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 no. Get the mic. Get it. Your experience. What happened to your family? You told me some stories when you came those days Basically. about your elder, elder brother, some of the things he did and uh, some of the promises he gave you. Can you help us? Give us insight. You know, when we teach these things, people say, no, it's not utopian. It's practical. Yes? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, my elder brother, we're just two, as a male. He told me. They are just two. Yes. two. Two males in the family. Then sisters, too. Okay, a lot of sisters, but yeah, males. Three of them. Now, this elder brother you're talking about is he from your mom? Yes, and same dad. Same dad, same mom. Yes, okay. sir. So, in the world of witchcraft, you, your brotherhood, your true brotherhood, are the members of the coven. Um, your blood, in fact, some of the most hated people around your life might even be your blood relatives. So the psychology of, of witches is what we are still studying it. We are, still stu <laughs> we are laboring to understand the way witches think. Okay? So this is his blood brother. All right? Go on. So I, I traveled to the village 2018 and then I met with him. He said, uh, he, when he saw me, he was shocked and then he started confessing that he has done everything to kill me, to destroy me, to waste my life. He don't even know. It's only God that can tell the story as to why I am still you see, alive. alive. Okay. And then he now said uh, he, has, he has gone to so many places. He, he brought out my picture that he had with him. And he said this picture has been to so many places. But he tried to kill me, but it didn't work. He tried to convert my wealth because he has seen who I am in the realm of the spirit that he has done everything so that's the aspect that concerns me mm -hmm. converting his wealth now you might see this very simple scripture and in your own estimation it's, it's poetic the thief cometh not but to steal to kill <laughs> god has revealed big things in that way. so he traveled from place to place trying to shrine seeking to find the warlock that has the mas mastery of wealth transfer. When you are talking about wealth transfer and believing God, you are quoting the scripture. The wealth of the wicked is accumulated, is laid up for the just. They which have another doctrine. Their own doctrine is that your own wealth is available. And it's going to be converted. It's going to be diverted. Just like budgetary allocations in, in the Nigerian context are diverted. It's also possible in the realm of the spirit. Yes? So... He said it, some, to some places he went, the native doctors, they, they pursued him because he said, this man, you can't destroy him. And then the last time I traveled, he told me about the same thing he did, that it didn't work. The so chance. anytime he goes home, he has news <laughs> from a very desperate, <laughs> a very desperate, wicked brother. He has news from the brother every time he goes home. So even before he travels home, he will send me a text. Can I go this? So he comes with new expositions. May the Lord give you understanding. May God help you to know that witches are not as relaxed as you. Mm. They are very determined. Very consistent. At the end of the day, when we see Satan on the other side, I will hear him. That You try. <laughs> you try. Oh God, you try. Very consistent. You will pray for 21 days. I say you want to go and stretch. You want to stretch yourself. Which is don't go on sabbatical. It's after that 21 days they will now become they will charge. The Bible says that Jesus went into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. We we're not told the temptation for the for the 40 days. But the Bible says that after those days were ended, he was unhungered and the tempter. <laughs> you would think that okay, it's 40 days temptation. Then you will relapse. After those, the temptations they recorded in the Bible were the temptations he tempted Jesus after those 40 days were accomplished. So anytime he goes home, there's breaking news. 
of current satanic technology that have been adopted <coughs> to prey on his death. <laughs> okay, just round up. The, the last time I traveled, he met with me and he said, uh, he had done everything to kill me, but since he didn't work, can we be one family? <laughs> In fact, he said that. Now, let's be one. There's something called the witchcraft embrace. I, I, don't, I don't have time for that this time. When a witch, a warlock has tried to get you spiritually and he, he doesn't succeed, he needs to be able to get you physically, naturally. So um, he begins to advance this strategy of embrace. We'll talk about the ingredients in that strategy. And just in case you're in that situation, what and what you need to do. There is something that must happen before you can accept that person as a brother. Until that thing happens, don't be gullible enough to drop your guard. Because when you see the appeal for community, it is an indication of the fact that the warfare has gone to another level. Are you true? All right, so salute my friend. The thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Now, let us look at this in threefold. Because um, spiritual covering is on three levels. Turn with me so that you may not understand the intentions of the thief until we explain spiritual covering and what to expect if you are spiritually covered. Indicators that show that you are beginning to lose your covering. Let's go to the book of Job. Job chapter 1, beginning from verse 8. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and a steward evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught? Hast thou not made an edge about him and about his house and about all that he has on every side? That's the three scopes of a spiritual edge. Let's go again. Number one. Hast thou not made a hedge about him? That's you, your life. Your life is secure. If you are spiritually covered, your life is secure. Right? That's number one. And about his house, not just your life, your biological children and other people that are in your custody. They benefit from your covering, whether they know it or not. Are you, are you there? Should I say something? I hope you will not hear it as pride. May the Lord purge your ears so that you will hear what I'm saying, not what you think I'm saying. You may not know, but pastors that are in this city are enjoying covering because of what we are doing. Even if he doesn't know, he doesn't know at all, but he's, he's enjoying covering because of what we are doing. Because the next scope of covering is that those in your house are covered. Those in the territory that your priesthood is prevalent enjoy the implication of of your spiritual activity and hence they also drink from your cover exactly the third level of covering has to do with substance substance your car your investment in the bank your business the works of your hands now sometimes in warfare god will allow because of the intensity of the warfare god might allow satan touch the things that you have so whereas spiritual covering covers these three scope of things, I need to show you the insurance policy of spiritual warfare. Luke chapter 10 quickly. Luke chapter 10 verse 19, that's the insurance policy of spiritual warfare. So if you are in a situation of warfare, this is the guarantee. Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So the insurance policy of 
spiritual warfare is about you. You get it? So when there's a battle situation and it becomes so terrible, this is the guarantee. You will not be hurt. It is because of this that we need to, our children, spiritual and physical children, must be brought up to be warriors too. The more warriors we have in the clan, the more impossible it will be for Satan to be able to pray on any life. I heard of a pastor that pastored for 32 years and under his pastorate, nobody died for 32 years. He trained everybody to be a warrior. 32 years. An American pastor. So, the moment your children come of age, teach them how to pray in tongues and how to pray in tongues for long. Take food from them. Let them understand fasting. How to starve the flesh and to stop the spirit. You will find out that under 12, under 14, children will be able to have prophetic dreams that will guide you and save you from attack. Just like the scripture says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nothing shall by any means hurt them too. See that? I have seen people that died just because they were spiritually immature. And they made no effort whatsoever to build themselves beyond their current status of civilization. When intense wars take place, the innocent suffer. Have you heard of what happened to in, in the book of Matthew chapter 2? When Herod was looking for the children that were two years and under because the wise men when they left his palace they went to visit jesus in manger and they were warned by an angel and they departed another way the statistics that herod had with which he could walk with was two years and under so he gave a decree that they should slaughter every child that was two years two years and under because he didn't have more information in his data bank he had a broadband kind of information and that was what they used to execute children a generation of children, they were wiped out because it was a day when spirits were at war. Human beings were pawns in their chess games. You will see angels leap into people's dreams and say, go to Egypt. Because it, they, they, there was chess, chess game in the territory. And we could see that the devil did not have the insight that would have given him the advantage in the war. So he had to kill a lot of people. And that day, children died not because they had sinned. That day, people died because in the time of spiritual warfare, innocence is not a guarantee for life. I went to preach in my village and it was a powerful moment. You know, that anointing that is upon me to discern death, people that are about to die, it was just operating and we're bringing people from the hands of death. It was wonderful. And I'm talking about my, our ancestral church. I know you don't understand what I'm talking about. When I don't even know how they invited me in the first place. In fact, I'm I'm confused now. I'm confused. But it's just like NKST, they invite me to preach in NKST. Not NKST, my call the NKST in the village, in your village, where you are. So when I got there, I, I, I they put me on minister seat. Okay. You can imagine the pastor didn't greet me now. So I'm wondering, okay, how did they arrange this meeting? Because the pastor is not is not happy that I'm there. I greeted him like this. He pretended as, as if he didn't see me. I didn't like it. When I was tired, I, I stopped. I saw the elders at the back. I, I didn't like this. No one. So I'm wondering who approved the who approved my coming. <laughs> then we started ministry. The healing anointing came so strong. Two of the elders that were deaf in one ear each. The ears popped up. My own uncle, that is the eldest in our family now, I didn't know he was deaf in one ear all this while his ear popped open and he, he gave his life to Christ during the, the altar call. Witches began to manifest in the church with loud voices. When I finished preaching and I came back, I still greeted the elders. Then they, they now looked at me angrily, but they now do that. <laughs> Power can change things. Power can change things. <laughs> Jesus. Finished preaching, hopped into the vehicle to come back. We got to um, Taraku. One man has his brake had failed and he just faced us like this. And the guy that was in front of us now stepped on his brake to ensure that we didn't we couldn't dodge. If we go this way, we'll kill everybody here. So we just waited for the man to come and 
we drove that car from that place to Makoti like a bicycle. Because in the heart of spiritual warfare, God can allow some of your, your goods to be victims. But nothing shall by any means. Because of time, I'm going to stop here. Thank you for watching. And if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe, and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.